See, we get straight to it. We got a certified ass whooper in here with us today. A real ass whooper. Brownville, bro. Never ran, yeah. never will. That's right. You taking it on. Let's go, Chad. We got to just, we're just going to let, let the energy just, just reset no, up no, in here. No, 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 no. When nigga got chain gang energy in the free world. Oh, man. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. <laughs> when you took that nigga food. That was a whole different and level. Ate it. Oh, man. And you, I'm talking about literally like, oh, <laughs> oh this is my food. Matter of <laughs> fact, this is my fault. No, I, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I was like, man, <laughs> this nigga Shannon Breeze had to be putting ecstasy pills in them smoothies. That nigga was tripping. <laughs> but this nigga ain't got no shirt on. This nigga got his box. This nigga got the swim trunks on, no drawers. Let's go, Chow. Let's go, Jeff. Let's go, Jeff. Oh, but this nigga, this, and he was chasing Ukrainians around. The world, nigga. They just looking at his ass. They don't even understand what he's saying. Let's go chat. They like knock of it. Black guy. What's wrong? With what's wrong? Set from the father. Yeah, fuck all that. Let's go chat. I'm like, man, this nigga is ready to fight. We knock that nigga off that boat, man. I said, bruh, how was you finding this nigga, man? Oh man, you know he was living in my neighborhood at the time. I had a spot at um, Hollywood Beach, and I was like, I was on Virginia Street. He was like eight blocks away. So um, people was always tell me, would always say, yo, I just seen Clisco. And uh, one time I just missed him in a supermarket. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a girl who worked in his building. She was like, he'd be out there every day on the, on the wakeboard or whatever. I was like, word? So I went out there like once or twice, he wasn't out there. Right. And then the third day we went out there, we seen him. So we went and got on my man boat and came back, but then he, he, he we thought he disappeared. Right. And I was like, nah, nah, wait, look. I see him, they was like, nah, we going back. We had been there for an hour. And when he seen him, he was a little speck. <laughs> he right. was getting closer and closer. <laughs> and then, uh, but you know, I got a little, not get in trouble, but the cops called me and was like, yo, right. you know, he could have died and we might be pressing charges on you. I had a lot of, you know, stuff going on over that shit. Yeah, that nigga was on the phone. <laughs> Fuck it, let's go, champ. If he dies, he dies. Oh, Fuck shit. You, nah, <laughs> we wouldn't kill nobody else. <laughs> nah, but check this out, though. Like, even if I had never seen none of your fights, I would have been a fan just by the amount of shit that you talk. All right. <laughs> I, I, it's just my, it's a certain place in my heart for people who talk shit. Thank you. That's why I fuck with social media so hard. I don't never have to meet these people, but I know if it's people getting up every day, taking the chance of talking the most shit, right. I feel like that's my tribe. Right. <laughs> so where the slogan came from? I duh, you're a champion. Hold up, we didn't even do this right. We got to then. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. Welcome back. Let's go champ. Hey. Let's, Let's go, go champ. champ. Let's go champ. Let's go champ. We're bringing out the champ and everybody today. I know that you and DC are, are such boxing fans. I'm going to split this intro up. Let's go, champ. I'm going to split it up because this is definitely one of the legends. Oh, man. Of boxing. So I thank you, Chad. And it's like, that. you know, we, we talk about classic matches and shit like that. We watch them on the road when we're in the hotel and shit like that. And we definitely watch all your clips. And, you know, we fans and we fuck with the energy that you bring to the end to the game. And we just, we, we ecstatic to have you here and travel with us none other than Shannon the Cannon Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, champ. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, champ. Thanks for having me. I appreciate y'all for real. For I got a direct quote. I finally quote. made it, man. Yeah, you did. I finally <laughs> made it, Bob. Look at me now, y'all. Nah, you been made it. Look, man, we, we got a direct quote from Lennox Lewis that said you had the fastest hands and the best punching power of anybody he ever fought. Sheesh. Sheesh. That's saying something. He fought Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, I was all right, man. I was all right, you know. I did That's my humbleness. thing. Yeah, I was all right. <laughs> I did my thing, you know. I did the best I could under my circumstances. Yeah. I was born with asthma. Uh, you know, I ain't had no brothers and sisters growing up. I was the only child. They picked on me, you know what I mean? I was bullied. And then um, I got sick of it one day, and I was like, I'm going to fight back, you know. And I started fighting back. And then I, I, I literally, like, almost fell in love with the art of fighting, you know what I mean? I would go ask people how to slap box and do everything, and then, uh, I was homeless at the age of 14, and then I stumbled across the boxing gym at like 16, 17. What city? Brownsville, Brooklyn. I'm from, oh, Brooklyn. Oh. I'm from Brownsville, which is in Brooklyn. Damn, Damn. It's, it's, his yeah. it's his own city. It's his own city. Yeah. It's his own town. You know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm from the Ville, and uh, you know, that was uh, a big part of my you know, beginning growing up there. Because you know, you had to be able to fight there. You know, Before the guns came out, 
you had to be able to, you know, get busy. So, you know, I, I picked that I picked that up early, learning how to fight. But you grew up in the time where Brownsville was super live and yeah, it was all like, type of hip hop going on. Uh, the fashion was crazy, the ladies MOP. was gorgeous, right. the drug dealers really was multi, multi millionaire type shit. It was doing their thing. The New York was at the prime. It right. was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. But, you know, it was the eight seventy. First it was the seventies, mm -hmm. and then that was like dog times. You know what I mean? Right in Brooklyn, and then the eighties came, and uh, you know, it was rough in the beginning, the early eighties, and then you know, crack cocaine came, mm -hmm. and then that's when young young people start getting money. It was the first time in history that young kids, I'm talking about thirteen, fourteen years old was having a thousand, two thousand dollars in their pocket in the history of the United States, of the planet. Right. Young black male men having enough money to go buy cars and stuff like that. So it changed the community, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't ever I look back in those those eighties and I, I don't feel good about them because a lot of my family, my mom was had an addiction. Uh everybody my a lot of people in my family was on crack, you know what I'm saying? And drugs. So you know, it was a rough time for, then, like I said, the mid-80s came, uh, my mom was on drugs bad, you know, people was like, yo, you wanna hustle? And I was like, you know, I don't count too good to be hustling, y'all might wanna kill me later for the money. And I was fortunate <laughs> to find boxing, you know what I mean? I got into that and it saved my life, man. I was homeless, like I said, and um, you know, that was the way out, out for me. I made it, I, I was fortunate to get on the USA team. I was the US, 1992 champion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that led me to the Olympic trials. Unfortunately, I broke my hand. Mm. You can see that. God damn, now. Let me see. <laughs> see. God damn, oh, God damn, damn champion. champ. Got a butt cheek on his fist. God <laughs> damn. damn. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> you broke I'm that when you was 14? Yeah. And you, but you went professional with this same damn hand. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I broke both of them. If you look at that. Oh, shit. So this is a big ass shit, broke so hands. I was gunning, man. Actually, I had asthma, so like, you know what I mean? I couldn't get it on quick. So I had to get my shit off quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had to get it off quick. I had quick, to get my shit off quick, you know what I mean? Man, that's so crazy, because, you know, growing up at, when I grew up in the city of D.C., like, boxing was, like, it was kind of like a oh, part of passing. Oh, my boy. Oh, yeah. So my partner, my partner. No, yeah. You yeah, for real? You know what it's like, then. Yeah. Come on, yeah. champ. Come, Come on. <laughs> I'm the first asthmatic heavyweight champion what in the world. What you talking about, nigga? Yeah, heavyweight champion, asthma, yeah. asthmatic. So, you know, it was like a rite of passage, like you had to know how to fight in some capacity. But it was just so many people that understood the art of boxing that it kind of came with the neighborhood a little bit. Some people kind of retracted from it and ran away from it. Right. But it was something I always loved. So yeah. I know that for me, it always used to give me a release from whatever was going on, you know what I mean? A, a legal release, if you will, that I can go and just get the aggression off. And yeah. you know what I mean? If it was a problem, they had put us in the put the gloves on, that nice. type of thing. So nice. like being as though you grew up the way that you did, at what point did you realize that really boxing was the thing for you to do professionally, not just in the neighborhood like we all might do, but going pro is something different. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, champ, I didn't have any options. You know, I really tried though. I mean, I, I had literally been did you know that even if you have a 401k for your retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match, okay? Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA, with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get cc at robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfer is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Southfield, Michigan, the Detroit area. Look here, I'm coming back. I'm gonna be at the Punchline Comedy Lounge. Five shows. Yes, I will be doing my 600 pound life live. I'm doing them all five shows because this is the last time I will be touring doing my 600 pound life during my comedy show. So go on ahead and get them tickets. They won't last long. Uh, they never last long. I sell out every time I come to Detroit. So look here, don't miss out because I will not be doing my 600 pound life again live. Oh, nobody. So go ahead and get them tickets. They don't sell now. Go to 85southshow.com or to the Punchline website. Working 
Uh, I started working when I was eight years old, you know what I'm saying? I, I was packing bags at the supermarket, and then uh, I was selling newspapers. I had I had, uh, I had caught a newspaper route. That's a whole other story. <laughs> it was somebody else's route, but I had caught a newspaper route. <laughs> I had caught a newspaper route. And then, um, you know, I was doing different things, odds and ends. I was always working, you know what I mean? I worked in ice cream parlor, you know, and then, um, you know, we saw get older, and then crack cocaine came out, like I said, in the mid 80s, and everybody was driving fly cars and dookie rope chains and fresh Adidas, and I was like, you know what I mean? I wanted that too, but I, you know, hustling wasn't for me, because like I said, I had family members on drugs. I didn't feel good selling drugs and watching what it did to, you know, to my people. And right. literally, it really took out like two, I want to say three, four generations of black people. I, I seen, I seen uh, like grandmothers get on crack, the daughter, the granddaughter, the sons, and then like that whole family bloodline die because from drugs, you know what I'm saying? So for me, you know, that wasn't my thing. And, uh, you know, after, you know, uh, 335 was, was what they was paying back there for hour, you know what I mean? Damn. So I wasn't really doing it. I tried to get jobs and all that, but um, boxing was the best route. You know, I would go to the gym, and I remember my coach would be like, yo, I'll give you $5 if you spar somebody. And with $5, I could get, like, like four chicken wings and fries, you know what I'm saying, right. soda, you know what I right. mean? So I'd be like, all right, come on. I'd spar a few people, get, a, get like, $5, $10. And I was like, you know what, this is the only thing paying me, you know what I mean? Jobs was coming and going, you know what I mean? So I got back into that. And um, I got locked up one time, too. I got in some trouble just trying to be, you know, doing something I shouldn't have been doing. And like I said, you know what? I, I think the best thing for me was that I was never good at crime. You know what I mean? I think that was the best thing for me. I learned early that, you know, I would get in trouble and I'd be like, damn, you know what? This just getting locked up shit ain't for me, you know what I mean? So, um, and then my pops died in jail. My mom's died an overdose on my birthday. Damn. So all these things was, was putting me in a place where I was like, damn. I'm gonna end up just like them if I don't do something different. So I went to the gym. And then I was nice too. I had hands, you know what I mean? Yeah. I had good hand skills, you know what I mean? I was, I could see punches coming and move, you know what I mean? You remember your first professional fight? Yeah. Yeah, I fought um, John Jackson, July 24th, 1992. Those are the dates you never forget. What, what, what date that is? July 24th, 1992. It's crazy. <laughs> I was two months old. Come on, man. <laughs> you was champ, for real. You're a legend, man. Thank you, Jack. Great, man. I was in the ring, <laughs> July 24th, 1992. I um, it was crazy because like, you know, I was in the streets. I was kind of moving around, doing silly stuff, and then I was like, damn, you know, I had friends that was hustling. They was getting knocked. Some of them was going to get locked up. Some of them wasn't. Some of them was having minor success. You know, we thought back in the days, if you had, you know, twenty thousand dollars, you was filthy, filthy rich. You know what I'm saying? But. That wasn't the case, you know what I mean? Especially the time that Brothers was getting. I know people that's, you know, some coming home now from the 80s, you know what I mean? But I say all I have to say, um, you know, boxing for me was just, uh, was, it was a life-changing experience that, you know, um, it gave me more than just a living. It saved my life, you know what I mean? Like I said, it taught me how to control myself, you know what I mean? When I was stressed out, I'd go to the gym, and it helped me, you know what I mean? But my going back to that July 24th, 90, 1992, I was just recently in the streets and 20 years old. And my boy, he was like, yo, you fighting in the month, my manager at the time. And you know, you never really count the days. And then, you know, they was like, yo, come on, we're going to fight. I was like, damn, what? You <laughs> came already? Yeah, I was like, for real? So you trained for real? I trained, I trained, I trained. I was training with Teddy Ellis at the time. He was my mm. first coach. We had trained, but uh, that's a that's wild a dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's you ever met him? No, I ain't never met him, but I, oh, I met. He, uh, he, yeah. Hey, I met Teddy Adams a few times. He's my first trainer. Yeah, yeah. he t he love a good dirty joke, don't he? Oh, bro, that's great. <laughs> he would tell. He got a million of them. Oh, man. Yeah, good guy. Good guy. Solid guy. He taught me a lot. Yeah. He was my first professional trainer, and uh, you know, like I said, I turned pro that night. I mean, I literally that night, I was in the ring, and I was like, damn. The bell's about to ring. I'm like, what am I doing here? Right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm shitting a brick, right. but I'm playing it off. And the bell rang, and I swear to God, yo, champ, he cracked me. The first punch of the fight. You get, you know, anybody at home, Google that fight, Shannon Bray's pro debut, and yo, dude cracked me. Bow! You can hear it, and the whole gym was quiet. I mean, the whole arena was quiet. You heard, bow! It sounded like a gunshot. Right. Cracked me, and I took it. And I was looking at him like, damn, he knocked the shit out of me. But I ain't Satan, I'm playing it all. <laughs> and um, I got my composure and I got him out of there. But uh, it was welcome to the pros, you know what right. I mean? You, you knocked him out? You ain't yeah, seen him coming? Um, 
You know what? I guess I, I, I he, he threw an overhand right. He did mm. that shit smooth because he, he was rushing with his head. Right. So he he did he the face. attention to the head he, and he didn't see the hand. He caught the I shit. Out. He caught the blah. And I was like, um, damn. But I, I stopped him in the first round. Then I had like, I want to say nine first round knockouts after that. Well, I do want to say not to you know give myself a blowjob, but I got the most first round knockouts. You do. In in for in any reach at thirty seven. Thirty seven. Yeah. yeah. Damn. yeah. Yeah. I had to say that, you know what I'm saying? We salute like, shit like yeah, that. You, champ, you know what I'm saying? I had to pat myself on the back. I got the most first round knockouts in heavyweight champion history. More than any other heavyweight champion. Wow. But see, that's, that's what I want to ask you about. Like, you know, the boxing divisions is, you, you know, everybody, if you're a boxing fan, you appreciate, you know, all divisions. But it ain't nothing Balls like... that, by the way. Yeah, but <laughs> if you're a, I'm sorry. What I say? You know, no, New York. I said something earlier. Oh, all right. no, my bad. You, you, you said no job. Yeah, yeah. I said myself. Oh, yeah. I said get myself. I, I, I said get myself. Man, I'm but, hey, think about Look at that piss. I said I'm gonna just let that slide. She was holding it Nah, I'm sitting over here traumatized like, damn, what I just say? Divisions? You can't say divisions no more? My bad, champ. My bad, champ. My bad, champ. It's nothing like the heavyweight division, man, in boxing because that's the the big money division. Like, so what, and from your opinion, being a former champion and being a, you know, somebody that boxed in the 90s all the way through, what happened to the heavyweights, man? Oh, shit. Real Uh, heavyweights, man. I mean, I don't think nothing happened, but I think what happened was in the 80s. The American heavyweight, I'll say. Again, I think what happened in the 80s was we had Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson changed the history of the world. You know, he was a young, short, stocky street dude. You know what I mean? No socks, no shorts, no no robe, knocking people out. He was from Browns or from the streets. You know what I'm saying? The gutter. We we the gutter. Like, you talk about Brownsville, you talk about the gutter. You know what I mean? So. He he was uh, he changed history and he made every young person who was a fo- who couldn't make it in football or he wanted wanted to be a boxer, wanted to be a heavyweight, wanted to be like Mike Tyson, even me. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be like I didn't want to be like Mike Tyson. Oddly enough, I wanted to be like Ali, and I w- I was saying I'm gonna be able to beat Tyson with this style, with my mm-hmm. Ali style, because naturally I was a boxer. But here this man was the greatest heavyweight of all times, and I was an amateur kid looking at him like, but he was inspiring me. Even the thought of one day possibly fighting him or what I would do, well, he inspired me to even, you know, get into it really, to be honest with you. Because I was watching him in like 86, and I ain't really get into the box until 88. So you think that that's the reason why the heavyweight division, and it, we haven't seen another prominent heavyweight champion in America? Because even with the Kliskos and, the, and the, you know, the, the Furies and, the, you know, we had Deontay Wilder, but that's the closest we didn't got in since your era in that early 90s right, since right. we'd have had a dominant black heavyweight champion so is it you the know, fact that people don't is it the training is it the running the game is, is, it, is it the lack of training or is it the lack of no uh, talent to from your opinion i think i think that you know uh, a lot of big men don't want to uh <clears throat> excuse me a lot of big men rather play basketball or mm-hmm. they rather uh they rather play football mm-hmm. Than get hit for a living, you know what I'm saying? It's a hard job, man. Getting punched in the face, champ. It ain't easy, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep it real. Oh, it's not just the face, the body. Right. That's, the, that's, that's worse. the real I mean, shit. Yeah. You know that's nigga worse. hit me in the stomach. It's over. For real, right. nigga. You know that's even worse. So it's, it takes a lot. It's, it's the, de- the dedication it takes to make it in boxing, and the, the truth of the matter is, it's rare that you gonna make it, bro. Right. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Like it's really like a lotto because you gotta be able to fight. You gotta be able to have a good manager. And you can be the best fighter in the world if nobody know about you. You got to be able to be promotable. You get what I'm saying? You got to be able to be uh, sellable where the people want to see you. You know what I mean? Marketable. Marketable. Take take us back. Excuse me. Take us, take us. Big words. Sellable cool, but marketable was a more respectful word. Uh, Take us back to the night when you won your title. Mm, I want to know, like, the preparation. First one. The first one. That's always the best one. It's always the best. Yes, brother. What is it? But you got In your case, is it? Well, you know, to be honest with you, champ, uh, I won my first, I want to say, amateur title in 1990. So what's the difference? You gotta, see, you know, I, don't, I don't know the terminology. I feel like once a nigga get a belt, yeah. you got to respect that shit. You were amateur before you turned pro. Yeah. Okay. I was amateur, uh, and I had won the Empire State Games. And that shit to me was like one of the biggest feelings of my life, champ, to that point. You know, I was 18 years old. You know, I had never had no success in life, really, other than, you know, 
no success. I didn't do good in school, you know what I mean? I was having a rough life, homeless, you know, on and off. And then I won that title and it was like, damn, I felt like I did something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I felt like I could be more than just a prisoner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can do so with my life and shit. So, and that's what I'm about, man. Like, you know, I, you know, I, I tell people I'm traumatized from my childhood because it was so beautiful. I had a beautiful mother, I had a beautiful house, home, and then I lost everything. And I was homeless, sleeping in the exit of a building that I would find, sleeping in cars, you know what I'm saying? Sleeping at <laughs> friends' house, you know, a couch baby, living from place to place, you know what I mean? And then um, it traumatized me enough to become successful. Mm -hmm. And I said, one day I'm gonna be able to help, you know, kids like myself. You know, and I'm doing that now. We started um, the Brownsville Boxing Academy. We just purchased a building in Brownsville, and we gonna open up a gym. You know what I mean? Let's go, man. Thank you. Doing this. Damn. You know, Bell, what's up, man? Like, do you feel now, you know, being as though you didn't, you know, completed your career as a boxer? Like, do you feel? that your experience as a boxer is more, you know, effective in you helping the kids or is it that, you know, all of the shit that you went through as a child? Because you've gained success as a boxer. You made it and you became a champion. So you have the success story. Mm -hmm. Do you lead with that or do you lead with the, the trauma to motivate the kids more? Well, first of all, I ain't finished fighting. First and foremost. For real? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm serious. I'm 51,000 years old, right? But um, you look at like Mike Tyson, he did the fight with uh, Roy Jones a few years ago. And you look at a lot of champions, um, they fight much, you know. First of all, I'm not beat up, you know what I mean? I've never been really beat up. I had really, to be honest with you, out of my 60, 60 something fights, I might have had like five, maybe four wars where you say, damn, that was a tough fight. I had, I had some wars, you know what I'm saying? But I want to get in the war, I want to get in them next, but keep going. <laughs> okay, I had some wars, but. I'm fresh, man. I feel good. I just can't get no fights, man. They scared. They scared of you. Yeah, they I scared. Like they yeah. scared of you. Yeah, they scared. What about Rampage? Rampage? I thought uh, I'm, doing it's on. It's on like popcorn. January 27th, Hard Rock Casino. Yeah. Oh, so y'all, January? What? January 27th. I want you there. I want y'all as my guests. Y'all yeah, need to commentate for real, for real. Shit, I need y'all to commentate. Take it off. Yeah. Y'all to be live. Clear Florida. that off, man. Vegas. In Florida. In Florida. Yeah. Okay. Hollywood right. Casino, Hollywood man. Casino yeah. January 27th. January 27th. You know. Say less. I'm gonna tell you right now. Yeah. It's going down. 100%. It's a for, sh for show, for yes, show. Yes, okay, sir. I got a show, but I'm moving it. Nah. Nigga, I'm moving my shit. Say word. I'm coming. You gonna commentate? Yeah. Let's go, champ. I hope he be like, yeah. Let's go, champ. Y'all heard it. <laughs> hey, yo, Mark, Mark Julian, uh, all my investors out there, y'all gotta pay this man. <laughs> yo, let's go, champ. Oh, now, now just like yeah. Flat was saying, though, let's get into some of the wars. Mm. I wanna hear, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna hear, I wanna, okay. Let's keep the war state because this is good. <laughs> I want to hear the one where you thought this motherfucker will give me the business. Yeah. I spanked him. Mm. Versus I'm finna go ahead and get him the business. Oh, this motherfucker studied me. Mm -hmm. One more time, okay. The first motherfucker. Yeah. The first motherfucker. The first <laughs> motherfucker who you thought was gonna give you the business, right. but you spanked him. Who was that? Damn. Damn. Michael Hospital. Wow. Empire State Games. Wow. He was touching everything, everything. I mean, everything. Everything he hit was sleep. Big white boy, 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Always be the white boy. Ooh. Big white boy. Ooh, hitting hard. Everything he touched, I mean, he was sleeping it. Damn. You know what I mean? My coach didn't even want me to fight him. Was this head gear or no head gear? Head gear. He was knocking everything out, out cold with, head gear. with a head gear. He was a cop. New York City cop. Michael Hospital. I was scared. Damn. <laughs> yeah, he was a grown man. I was a kid. Oh, so you was a child finding a grown man. Yeah, but it, to beat him was the, the the next level where you like now you did your thing in New York because he was the New York City Golden Glove champion. Mm. You know, he was Empire State Game champion. Here I was coming on the scene, and I was young, flashy. I had blonde dreadlocks. As you can see, they gone. Right, right, right. <laughs> Damn, your dreadlocks got cut off too. <laughs> Shit, I give some of mine back. They got me, champ. I thought it. I was the only one loving my dreads. <laughs> <laughs> they got us, champ. <laughs> nah, yeah, I did them dirty. I did them dirty. Yeah, I did them dirty, dirty. But it was a good fight. And then, um, you know what? I had, I had a few, I had a few. Uh, I had some tough ones, man. So. Tough one. Uh -huh. You thought it was gonna be a piece of cake, but nah, you went, I had to go pound for pound, round for round. Franz Botha. Ooh. Franz Botha, the South Africa. Franz Watt Botha. The South Africa. South Africa. Yes, sir. That name was sure. serious. Tell him what? Hey, one day I was in the gym, right? right. And I heard uh, Evander Holyfield talking. He was talking to a reporter. They was like, uh, 
who hit you the hardest in your life, Evander? And he said, Francois Botha. And I overheard it. I said, what you say? <laughs> I said, what you say? He said, Francois Botha. I said, champ, me too. I said, I swear to God, champ, I couldn't believe it. I ain't gonna tell y'all, I ain't gonna lie. I went to jab. And I jab, cause I was catching him with the jab. Right. I said, this jab, I'm gonna put some mustard on this. I'm gonna break his nose with this one. Slip. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna break his, cause you, know, you be jabbing to keep yeah. him at bay. I right. said, but this one here, I'm gonna step in, I'm gonna break his nose. And I went to jab him, and I don't know how he timed it and moved to the- Slipped it. He slipped it, but he when he slipped it, he did he some caveman some, shit. He, you don't learn this. He did some caveman <laughs> shit, like turning away, and broke my ribs. Oh. Wow. Red broke. I said, God damn, I knew something was wrong. But I'm looking at him the whole time, like, don't show it. You know, I'm right. looking at really, I'm like, oh. right. but I'm looking at him like, I'm looking at him like this. But inside, I'm like, please don't hit me, Mr. Smoking like a snake. Come in front of jail. Oh, like oh, oh, don't hit me inside. Yeah, that's but, it. He because if I would have showed him, he, he would have man, game. he would have turned into a lion. From a kitten right. to a lion. Because now he know, oh, I got him. Yeah, I was sparring Bruce Seldon one time, former yeah. heavyweight champion. Man, he was jabbing me so far, hard and fast, he was opening his hand like this, and he pause. was and he, what does that mean? That was pause. He was jabbing you so hard and fast. Oh, come on, champ. Come on. Come on, champ. Hey, yo, camera. You was jabbing me so hard. Hey, yo, camera. Oh, no, you did this. Hey, yo, camera. Oh, no, 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 chill, no, chill, chill. No, chill. Chill, chill, chill. chill. I'm too old for that. I think you got a certain age. You out the game, right? You don't be. Yeah, y'all know what I mean. You started My bad, my bad. Yeah, I did. My bad. Camera on. Camera on jobs. Your fault. Hey, yo, champ. So he was. Up. All right, yeah, so I, I forget the jab, the jab, the jab, man, bow. So, um, man, y'all took, y'all took me away from it. No, 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 no. He said he's he opening it. He was, was, was far Bruce Selden. I was far Bruce Selden, god damn it. <laughs> I was far Bruce, Bruce Selden. Yo, Bruce Selden was opening his hand like this and backhanding me with the jab, and it was going, swap, swap, swap. Like, you know, I can take a towel when you right. pop it. Mm. Every time it was hitting me, wow, wow. Wow, wow, I said, God, I never seen no shit like this. Right. I never seen. I came back to the corner, Teddy Allen said, if you don't fight him, you gonna, he gonna turn into a monster. He gonna turn, he just, what his, his words was, he gonna, you gonna let the little kitty cat turn into a lion if you don't fight back. I was like, he said, there's no way out of this. You gotta fight back. That's the only way he gonna stop. So the second round, I got, I bit down, I started going crazy. Ah, we started getting it, boom, we banging out. He came back to the, to the corner, because Teddy said, uh, you did good, stay like that. He gonna quit. I said, this is Bruce Selden, man, this heavyweight champion in the world. You smoking or something? He said, do that again. I'm telling you, if you don't, mm -hmm. he, he gonna go crazy on you. Mm -hmm. Went back in there, ah, iron, we banging out, bam. He said, yo, that's it. He said, that's it. That's what Bruce said. I'm no disrespect, but you know, he came back. Okay, well, yeah, but I learned. If you don't, if you let them, if you let anybody, you feel what I'm saying? Right. Get up, see weakness, see you hurt. And I say that to say like, when, oh, oh no! no! Let's go, champ! Let's go, yo, champ! Yo, Let's go, yo. champ! That's when that shit hit for real. Let's go, champ! Oh. <laughs> yeah! That nigga story is getting so real, nigga, the lights cut off. I'm finna leave, this nigga oh, crazy. Yeah. That nigga Mr. Bruce Sheldon heard that nigga was like, yeah. Let's that go, nigga. champ. <laughs> That's the first time. That nigga scared the lights. That yeah. Nigga, God damn. Let's go, champ. God. So, yeah. 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 Uh, so show any sign of weakness. What if you show any sign of weakness, uh, when a man and you hurt and he hurt too, he feel the same way you feel. But if you if you show it, he going all of a sudden he gonna he, grow. Get, grow. He gonna get stronger. He was dead tired. Right. He ready to go. You ready to go. He hit you. He see you hurt. He, he ain't tired no more, right? He get a boost of energy. Yeah. So I learned early he was right about that. When you gotta keep, you gotta push him all the way downhill. Right. Cause if motherfucker start pushing back up and he get you going downhill. No, push him all the way downhill. So. Uh, you know, that was my career. Banging yeah. out, making pushing them downhill. Doing so, the best I could. So going back to that corner, cause now I'm, I, now I'm like, oh shit, we get corner stories. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna hear I wanna hear one of them corner stories 
that like it shook you and you and you and you had to bounce right. Like that corner store stuck with like it stuck with me. Man. Uh shit, damn, I was fighting man, rest in peace. Uh Puerto Rican brother, man, Santiago. He was from the Bronx, but he was living in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. I was the underdog. Uh I was the underdog to go to the Olympics. They had kicked me off the USA team. Uh, you know, I had lost the year before, but they wasn't feeling me because I had dreads. Mm -hmm. And they ain't really want me representing America like that in 1992 with dreads, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they was like, yo, if you don't cut your hair, you ain't gonna make the team. And I was like, I ain't cutting my hair. I'm a rebel, I'm a young boy. I'm like, no, I ain't cutting my hair, fuck all that. So um, they was like, all right, cool, we gonna show you. So they was doing everything to you know, push me, keep me down. And pfft, I hustled, kept fighting, kept doing my thing, and I got to the championships. Mm -hmm. And a brother, Puerto Rican brother named Santiago, man, he believed in me, and I needed that shit because I was out there on the women of prayer. And he said, he told me uh, before the before the fight, he was like, "Look, because they gave him a team of the people they did they didn't want to win, mm -hmm. so I was on his team. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they was like, yeah, he was like, look, they put you on my team because they don't want you to win. He said, man." I'm from New York, you from New York, you go out there and you win this shit. So his hype and what got me, but now we in the finals. I'm fighting Javier Alvarez. Mm -hmm. He got he got full 500 fights, DC. I'm fighting him for the second time. He getting at me, we going at it. I sat back in the corner and he said, yo, I never forget this shit. I'm 51 years old. That was in 1990, 1992. He said, yo, I had my, I was like this. I'm about to tell him, stop the fight, I can't breathe. I'm Damn. like, yo, that's it. We, we in Colorado, you know, they got the altitude. Hey, you feel me? That shit got me. I'm like, yo, stop the fight. I can't breathe. I'm an asthma attack. Right. He like, yo, this is the heavyweight division. You the man in the heavyweight division. He said, go out there right now and prove to them you the man. And I remember that, his words, and he died, rest in peace, I heard about a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. But he, I can remember, vaguely enough, him sitting here right in front of me in the corner, and him saying, yo, look, you the man. Go out there and show these you the man. And I went out there and I won that shit. Mm -hmm. And it touched me, because it, it, it was the first time, major championship, somebody believed in me, pushed me through that shit, you know what I mean? That's, That's real. Coach, that go crazy. Rest in peace. Coach Santiago, man. man. Speaking of what you just spoke about, being in the corner, like, huh, I yeah. get, like, what would you say is your most intense training? What fight did you have to train the hardest for? Because, you know, the training is really what makes the fighter to me. Like, that's the part that most people can't dedicate themselves to, yeah. is that training, nigga. You can't fuck, you can't eat the right. skin off chicken. Right. Like, it's a, it's a, <laughs> you know what I mean? Fuck you <laughs> no. making weight. You no. make weight and then you can gain this weight. I wouldn't have been able to train. But not me, I'm a heavyweight, so I yeah. can weigh whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, you know, what would you say was your most intense training session for a fight that George you had? Foreman. George Foreman. George Foreman. Take us back. We yeah, need to know. George Foreman. George Foreman. She you said that that dude hates hard as fuck. Boy. What about them George Foreman punches? Shit. Yeah, them shits was my <clears throat> nightmares. I couldn't sleep for two weeks after the Foreman fight. Two weeks I was fucked up, y'all. Excuse my language. I was messed up for two weeks after that fight. That boy hit hard. That man hit hard, excuse me. <laughs> I'm still scared. That man hit hard. That man hit hard, y'all. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, champ. You know, like, again, you know, like, again, your pain in your life is what really going. When you in a moment where you hurting physically, it, you can numb yourself out. If you got a bigger hurt in your life, I had always had hurt in my life. My mom's was on crack, heroin, my pops was in jail. I'm in the streets. I always had hurt. So my hurt was my fuel. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When my when I fought for him, my mom's died. I'm 25 years old. My mom died on my birthday. You know what I'm saying? I, December 4th, I wake up, I call, you know, I, my mom's dead. So those pains have always been my drive. You know, it's like, you know, I was fighting for him in first round. Bell ring, right? I'm hitting it with a jab. Bah, bah, bah. I said, damn, I got my work for that fight. So I, I, I had a thing where I would hook off the jab, one, three. Mm -hmm. And I did it perfect, y'all. I jabbed, got something to catch his ass. I caught him, bah, with a hook. My hardest hook I ever do. My knuckle, look at the knuckle. Uh -huh. I knew it, went, I seen it, it went right in his eye. The knuckle, everything. Bah! I said, I got his ass. He ain't even blink. Ooh! <laughs> he was just looking at me, he ain't even blink. My hardest punch I ever threw hit him right in the eye. Got you. Bah! He said, 
That would fuck a nigga up. That would fuck me up. Well, what the fuck we gonna do now? Yeah. He ain't even blink. He ain't even blink. He's looking at me like this. <laughs> yeah. And at that moment, you knew he took all your confidence. You see? I came out right to the corner. I was looking at you. I was looking at you. <laughs> I was like, damn. It's a trade video game. I was shook. I was shook. I came back to the corner because I knew that it was a perfect punch. I knew. I felt my knuckle go in his eyeball. Right. I got him. <laughs> Like, he didn't blink. Was it nothing to me? I'ma kill you. And he, you know what? I, when we, you know, I don't know why, but some fighters do that. You know, before fights, they don't shower, like for days. Right. What? Yeah, that's an old trick. You know, what I'm saying he do that trick. Cause when we got in the clinch, y'all. Well, I swear to God, we got in the clinch. Oh my God. He was so big. He was so young. Pause. All that. Whatever. I'm 50 years old, y'all, man. Chill out, y'all. Right, man. The story good. Fuck yeah, that man. shit. He was, you know, I grabbed him in the clinch. And he smell like a bear. You smelled the bear before? I, no, yeah, you go to the zoo, you know how them bears smell like animals? Right. I was like, oh shit. But I was, a bear musty, how a bear like, smell? He just, like a, he been training. <laughs> like, you know, that nigga smell like an animal. Nigga don't smell like You don't get it? Nigga ain't finna bang to go fight, no nah. kill him. Yo. You stink. I was like, damn, but I didn't know what it was, so I came back to the corner for a That round. changes everything. Yeah, it does, yeah. man. I'm so telling you, you, go into the you grab a nigga, he smell like garbage. <laughs> <laughs> then he wet. Yeah. <laughs> that shit on your face. <laughs> Yo. You can't think about that shit right now. Everything stank. And no. then you done hit the nigga. Then he hit the ball. And then he done blink. And he ain't phased by your heart. So what happened, what happened when you went to the corner? I was sat down. I was like, I'm fucked. <laughs> I was like, what I'm going to do now? So this is the first round. First round, champ. Damn. I was sitting there like, damn. And my coach, you know, he ain't speak that much English. Carlos Aguene, that's my love, that's my heart right there, my boy. He's my coach. He was like, boxing, boxing, box. He ain't speak that much English at the time. I was like, box, so this motherfucker ain't keep on stop coming. But I went out there first round. But I say that to say this, my mom just died. So that numb you with shit, you know. You might think for a second, damn, you know, uh, this motherfucker's strong or he keep coming, but fuck that, your mama dead, nigga. Get out there and go to work, you know what I mean? Make it happen, so. That's how I be, you know what I mean? Oh, damn. So, so you talked about the hardest punch he hit you with. When did the boy you hit him with? What was the one where you realized, nigga, I'm fighting Joe, other than the smell. But when did you realize, <laughs> oh, nigga, I'm fighting George Foreman because he hit you with one of them George Foreman punches? Mm. What round was it? You remember? He was uh, he was he was hitting hard, champ. I ain't gonna fight. He was hitting hard throughout the fight. Uh, he cracked me in the like seventh round. He literally knocked me out. I to tell you the truth, he cr hit me with a right hand bomb. And I was on my way out, and he hit me with a left uppercut and woke, yeah, woke me up. You up. Woke me up. Shit. Word up. That's my word. I ain't gonna front. I tell that story. It's true though. Word up. I was out. He was. I was gone. And he hit me and woke me up. Damn. But again, mom, mama, dad. So you got that? No pain. Right. No pain. Damn. Oh, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get mine's back. Right. That's all I'm thinking. I'm gonna get mine's back. You know what I mean? So it was a tough fight, Damn. but you know, I had some tough fights, man. You know, I had some wars. I had a few. I fought Klitschko. I fought him with one arm. I always make that clear. I fought uh, Vitaly Klitschko for 12 rounds with one arm. Why you say that? My shit broke in the first round. I mean, the first round. Look at that. Oh shit. Oh, that's, yeah, they had surgery. Yeah, that was right after the fight. They had to go through this side, come through this side. I fought on 12 rounds. Stood in the paint, trying to get it. You know what I mean? That's one gangster arm. shit. One arm, champ. Yeah. You ain't never throwing no white towel. I don't nah, believe in that shit. shit. Nah, it ain't. You know, <laughs> don't throw it in. Let me fight because. Right. Uh, yeah, Rampage, you're going down fast and hard. January 27th, you see up over here laughing and playing, but watch when the bell ring. I'm going to beat the shit out you. Damn. I'm going to beat the shit out you. That's my yeah. word. You're going to yeah. see. Word. You're going to see. I'm going to beat the shit out you. You yeah. think I'm playing with you? Watch. So how do you feel about like MMA fighters and all them coming over to he box? Said you believe Yo, they box. There's, the shit there's, there's MMA, MMA boxing and right. then there's real boxing. I'm going to teach him a lesson. Now, let me explain something to you. He wanted to fight me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He wanted to fight me. He said he wanted to, you know, do a pro fight. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, I can help you get ready and train you. He was like, train me? I'll beat you. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? I was like, nah, champ, chill. You know, he, so I was like, you think so? He was like, yeah, if I beat you, it'd be a good look for me because you got a good name. Did you slap him? Nah, nah, that's somebody else. <laughs> but um, so I was like, what? Who he slap? I forgot somebody. You didn't slap so many niggas, you forgot who you slap? <laughs> chill, champ, chill. There's lawsuits out there waiting for me. Oh, no, not chill, chill, no. But uh, Rampage is on like popcorn, July 27th, man.
Yeah, it's on. Back down from nothing. I'm right, trying to on. train you. July 27th. <laughs> January 27th. January 27th. January 27th. Did you I said say July 27th. I apologize. You're going to find another nigga already in already your mind. Ready. Like July 27th. Already ready. Nigga. No, no, I want to ask you this. I'm you already said, ready. You said <laughs> you are, how are you 50? What? 51,000. 51,000. Yes. And you say you want to have how many more fights? You know what, champ? I'm going to keep it real. I'm just, I'm just starting to get back in shape. You know what I mean? I just lost like 13 pounds. Right. Uh, I, 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 you know, I just feel like you didn't, I could do it, man. I can, I really feel like I could do it. Why not? I'm not gonna jump out there and do nothing crazy at first. I'm gonna fight myself back into shape. Right. I call it the pot tour. Yeah, you I ain't mean, scared, you, you, but you, you ain't stupid. You're a professional. Yeah, exactly. Once you're a professional, you're always a professional. That's a fact. So how is it, like you say, going by getting fights, knowing that I still can fight, I can bring out a crowd, I can sell tickets. Yeah. Do somebody have to agree to be like, I'll fight or you just won't be able to fight? No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically going to take my show on the road, you know what I'm saying, and just build up, you know, build back up, fight, stand busy. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm ready for um, for a major step up, I'm just walking somewhere, flip the table over on somebody's press conference, and be like, what? Right. Jesus and then they're going to be like, yo, he back, he back. Yeah. <laughs> he back. He you know back. He back with that shit again. Here he go. But I like when you have fighters, and then when the entourage try to jump in, you be like, yo, champ. <laughs> this ain't the one you want. No. You better get him. They like, yo, champ. That nigga All right, we'll get him. They like, don't touch me, champ. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. I'm like, bro, this nigga. Maybe the one I have. Wow, man. Oh, man. Y'all the best. Like, the where, best. where did you get the, like, when was your first time showing up and doing that in your career? Showing uh, up to a, a press conference or somebody doing like a, a way event, in. a weigh-in, and you showed up the way you are known to show up now. What was abrupt, the first time? Uh, you made an abrupt <laughs> entrance. Um, I, had, I, had, I had bloomed up in weight. I had got up to like, I was 403 pounds. Right. I was honest, I was depressed. I was suffering from major depression. Uh, they prescribed me Depakote, Seroquel. They said, you bipolar. You, I was just stressed out, you know what I mean, life. Right. And um, I got fat. And then um, a friend of mine was, you know, laughing at me one day, telling me how fat I was. Different people, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna get my shit together. So uh, I went on a journey, man. Um, I had actually started. I was, I had, I wasn't a cannabis smoker. You know, I grew up with asthma. I start, unfortunately started drinking since I was like 13, 14 years old. And then um, uh, when I was 40, 39, 40, pardon me, 38, a friend of mine was like, yo, you should try this instead of prescription drugs. And I tried cannabis and changed me, man. I mean, the first time I literally took the pills, poured them in the toilet, and started training. I hadn't been training in years, started getting in shape. And I started saying, let's go champ as self-motivation, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I lost 167 pounds, came back to boxing. That's amazing. That's, amazing. Right. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. I lost 137 pounds, pardon me, and came back to boxing. And uh, I, I had about four or five fights, and I was telling people, yo, put me in the newspaper, let them know I'm fighting. They was like, you ain't you too old, but right. I was 40. Right. I was like, well, I was like 39, I was like, yo, I'm back. And uh, I see it wasn't getting me nowhere. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, I gotta get disrespectful. That's the only mm -hmm. way, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, sometimes some people only respect violence. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the people love violence, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, we humans. So, uh, and I was pissed off, to be honest with you, Chance. It's a great market. It's yeah, a great market. But it wasn't even the market. I'm gonna keep yeah. it real. It was just, I was mad because I was like, yo, I'm doing my thing and let me live, let me eat, let right. me show me, pop, let me pop my shit off. And it was like, nah, you know, it wasn't. I, but I've been blackballed in the game three times already. And, and I call it errors, like the HBO era. Mm -hmm. I was blackballed. I was black. I, I've been blackballed for like quite a few times. You know what I'm saying? Where it was like you're never gonna get a fight on that on the, on tape or TV again. Or, wow. Yeah, yeah, huh? Wow. Cause I be talking my shit and and and, and also too, you know, I never really, you know, like I told you earlier, I've been working since I was eight years old. Right. You know what I mean? And I always had a boss. You know what I mean? That paid me on Fridays or whatever. And he had tried to jerk me too, you know what I mean? So I, when I got into the boxing game, you know what I'm saying? It was even worse than that, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I literally, millions of dollars that I've been stolen from me, millions and millions and millions of dollars. I can't even go into it, but millions, I could go into it, but <laughs> y'all be sitting here listening all day, but. Shit, we love it, we love this shit, like we be like, what? But this boxing shit crazy. So, you know, but on the business wise, you know, I've always been hustling, putting plays together and, um, I always had to, you know, be on top of my game. So be, doing that, they didn't like that. The establishment ain't like me, you know, talking back or basically saying like, yo, that ain't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, the paperwork ain't right, champ. Or why am I doing this? Why this? And, and you know, I'm talking back or I'm 
You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm asking the questions that Everybody should be asked. Ask question. I'm asking the questions that should be asked as, as a person that's going in there doing it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people will say, yo, take this fight. And I'd be like, nah, I ain't taking that fight. That ain't the right fight for me. And, um, you know, it was like, all right, cool, watch this. And they make that call and try to blackball me. But the good, dude was, good, good, the good news was the internet came out. Mm -hmm. So when the internet came out, I was able to move without them. Now, mm -hmm. people, the fans is my people, you know what I'm saying? That's why I call it the Let's Go Champ Army. Mm -hmm. Because they give me the ability to still be seen and the promoters is watching that, you know, the net networks is watching it. Now we don't have to depend on the network so much, you know, mm -hmm. because of streaming platform. Look at y'all, man, come on. Y'all, shout come out on. to y'all. Come on, come on, y'all. Yeah. Let's Go Champ, you know what I mean? Yeah. Studio, beautiful, big, crazy studio, you know what I'm saying? Different rooms, y'all, y'all, that inspired me and showing me. I was an older brother, look at my young black brothers, man, what y'all doing? This is live at five, man. Yeah, hey, if you get your gym, I want to uh, sponsor some equipment. Oh, uh, word, that's crazy, man. Well, that's for real, for real, yeah. We doing a movie, man. Uh, shout out to Michael Rappaport, to Adriel Playhouse Productions, and shout out to Amazon. Amazon, we just picked up a deal. We're I doing an A-series show uh, that's hard. In Brown, in, called Brownsville on Amazon. Oh, that's yeah, dope. Yeah, yeah, A-series. Yeah, right. That's what's up. Well, see, you, since you talk, dropping the promo, what's oh, what? Shit. Tell me about the book. You dropped the day. <laughs> Let's go, chat. The book dropped today. You know what I'm saying? I just got the book before I got on the plane today. And uh, i fortunate I was here with you brothers in a uh, long time coming. I'm here with y'all. And I dropped my book today. Just got it today. And it's the stories, man, growing up. You know what I mean? Since I was a kid, like I said, hustling, working jobs all my life, and then getting into boxing, which is, which is, which is a business as well. Mm -hmm. So I've always been in a, in, a, in a business of making money. I've always been in a business of surviving, finding a way, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and literally making it a point not to go to jail, you know what I mean? Because I used to go visit my pops in jail a lot, you know, all upstate New York, every prison, right? Because every state I've been there, Clinton, Sing Sing, all that. So growing up, growing up as a kid, going on those buses and all that, well, so I, I said, this is something that I want to stop, you know what I mean? So I think in building this Brownsville Boxing Academy, will have an opportunity to save lives, man. Because think about this, you got three heavyweight champions from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Brownsville, Brooklyn is not, it's not two miles in size. It's under two miles, wow. 1.8 miles. With 200,000 people living at 1.8 miles. God damn. Yeah. yeah. 200,000 people in how many miles? 1.8 miles. Damn. Damn. Yeah, 200,000 people. I want to ask you this, like, you've been, you've had a long career. Who are some of the boxers that you would consider your friends that you fought? That I fought? Yeah. Lennox Lewis is cool. Yeah, Lennox is a cool brother. Real talk. He a good brother. Uh, Mike, I never fought Mike. Mike is the best. He's the best. Yes, sir. Yes, he's the best. He's, he's the best. Yeah, he's the best ever. Funniest shit. We laugh. We laugh. We laugh. Um, I'm cool with everybody, Chad, but set Rampage. Nah, I'm going to knock you out. But nah, <laughs> Rampage, he cool, but I'm going to knock you out. But um, uh, I'm cool with everybody. I'm trying to think, who did I fight that I'm cool with? Um, I'm for, I fought Ray Mercer, man. I love Ray Mercer, man. Ray Mercer is a is a G. He's a one of the, I think one of the toughest men in the planet that ever lived. You know, real talk. He's a vet soldier. Uh, shout out to Ray Mercer. I fought him. It was a tough fight. He had a hell of a jab, man. I couldn't stop it. I, no matter what I did, I would look at it. <laughs> I said, I, you ain't gonna hit me with this one. <laughs> yeah, ain't no way. I'm looking at his fist. There's no way this one gonna hit me. I'm like, God, Damn. it's just the timing was crazy, you know what I mean? It was right. crazy. So Ray Mercer was one of the great, great one of the great fighters in history, and I can say I'm happy to say I fought him. Who's some of your young guys, my man? Go ahead, go ahead. Some of your young fighters that you like watching or you enjoy today? seeing them come up today. Oh man, they all get busy, all of them. Shakira, uh, Terrence Crawford, mm -hmm. uh, all of them getting busy, boy. They they it's 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 a good time to be alive and see the young boys get busy. They don't fight enough for me, but you got Devin Haney, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, Loman Chaco. You know, you got you got that young boy Anderson coming out. Shout out to Big Baby Miller. You got Ed, like Big Baby Anderson. You got um man, you got a lot of fighters, man. They coming up, man. But, but you know, my, my my next, I think my next, uh, besides, you know, a couple more fights, just for fun, to be honest with you. Like I'm doing this exhibition with Rampage. I'm gonna have a few few fights just for fun. Uh, shout out to Roy Jones and Antonio Tarba. I just spoke to them yesterday. Let's go, champ. Uh, you know, I'm just doing it for fun, but the next the next stage of my life is to be like Don King. You know, his hair grew up, mine grew down like this. So I'm gonna try to you know, do some promotion, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You know, do some promoting, promoting fighters and shit like that. All the way, I had a question for you. Sure. What's the best fight you've ever seen that you weren't in? 
I went to see uh I went to see Closed Circuit, Sugar Ray Leonard, and Marvin Hagler. Woo! That shit was cold. That shit was cold. I know that shit was cold. <laughs> Closed Circuit. I was a kid. I went to see that shit. That shit was that was electrifying, man. To see Ray come back after you know, against the Hagler, you know, the one of the marvelous ones. Right. That shit was right. That was, a, that was right. the main strategy they used. Ten seconds. You ain't see that? <laughs> you see that? That's how he was you the fight. That? That shit that's was a crazy. cold. That's one of the best strategies in boxing history, that right was there. A cold fight, right there. Now, I, I, my personal favorite fight that I ever seen was uh, Arturo Gatti and uh, Mickey Ward, mm. the first one. Yeah. The first Mickey, the first Ward Gatti, like that was that. I remember watching it on the HBO. I think it came on the, the Friday night fights, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And them niggas, they fought from round one yeah. to 12 and beat yeah. the dog shit yeah. out of each other. Rest in peace, Toro. Shout out to my boy, Mickey. That's my boy, Mickey. Oh, bro, you, you know Mickey, man. I love Listen. Mickey. That's my brother. I love Mickey. Shout out to Mickey Ward. That's what's up, Real man. brother, real good guy. So who he just likes skin. You got <laughs> you got I got to ask, like, I know this is a, one of them cliche questions, but I got to know, like, who your top five fighters of all time? Mm -hmm. That's right. First and foremost, Jack Johnson. The greatest. The greatest well, I mean, the time. greatest nigga. Mm -hmm. Niggas don't know about that boy Jack Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. He, he had the hardest path. The hardest path. That's exactly what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Because of his path, let alone. There was other black fighters better than him at the time, from, from what they say. Really? Yeah, yeah, a lot. That's a lot. Quite a few. But I don't think they, they didn't have what he had. No, he had losses. He had losses. He had four quite a few brothers that had, you know, gave it to him. But he came back and beat him. He wasn't undefeated or nothing like that. But it wasn't a big thing not to be undefeated back then. But he, um, he, 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 he was walking the walk in front of them boys. Like, this is what? Like, you know what I mean? They, he had them shook daddy. They was like, he had that pistol. He was gold teeth. He was a gangster. White, white women. women. Three. <laughs> Three of them. Three. Three. Yeah, he was, uh, he was gangster. So, you know, but, you know, yeah, he was a different type of, you know, brother. Then you could talk about, uh, you know, not talk about, not, people don't talk about him enough, but uh, Henry Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And I and I say him. Oh, no, Henry yeah, Armstrong. Hurricane Hank. See, that's the, that's the problem that if there was ever a movie that should be made about a fighter, it should be about Henry Armstrong. Yeah, please do look him up, everybody, because he was the greatest fight of all times better than jack jack just carried a uh a, a, he carried us on his back because every time jack johnson fought they would go on killing sprees and lynch the, you, hundreds of blacks they would say one or two but hundreds of blacks would be lynched so you knew when jack johnson fought black people was gonna die there was gonna be some killing that's because, a good thing no that's fucking terrible but, but think about this and i said that too right but think of how many people was happy that they couldn't believe there was a black heavyweight champion. They never had nothing to look at and they never had no baseball players to look at. Yeah. They had no president. They oh. had no people in government, but they had something. And that's what black people all around the world need to understand. Boxing, the sport of boxing, one man changed the earth, Jack Johnson. Black people was killed when he fought, but think how many were smiling because he was beating them. And they, was, they couldn't imagine in a million years, a billion years, that a black man could be heavyweight champion. So, so crazy that for 40 years after him, they would not let a black man fight for the title. What? For 40 years until Joe Lewis came around, until they let Joe Lewis fight for the title. So that's how powerful of a man that Jack Johnson was, that he was such a figure. Yeah, I don't know, I, I said the same thing. Damn, people died, it's a bad day. But then I started scratching my head, I said, damn, but think how many people was in power to saying, yo, we could be something one day. Just like when I was saying Mike Tyson was in the 80s. Everybody wanted to be a boxer. That's why you see the 90s, now this is, this is deep. The 90s is really the golden era of boxing in the history of boxing, the 1990s. You had more men, and young men around the world who wanted to be boxers coming out of the 80s because of Mike Tyson. So you had, you had so many names, I can't begin to name. Chris Bird, Haseen Rockman, John Ruiz, David Tua. Um, Riddick Bowe. Riddick Bowe, I read the Holyfield, but he was from the 80s, but you just had so many people that wanted to be boxers because of Mike and then Holyfield and that money was in boxing, boy. $20 million fights. You could be a bum, get a Mike Tyson fight and get knocked out and get 10 million. 
people was jumping in there. I'm next. Yeah. I'm next. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just trying to jump you don't in there. Think so. Floyd Mayweather was like that? Did it like that? In regards to what? Meaning like. He could Shout fight bums. Money we spoke the other day on the phone. Yeah, he, was, he, he fought some bums, and they was getting the biggest paychecks of their lives. Yeah. So. Well, I, won, I, won, I, won, I don't know who he fought. To be, but he had some tough fights. He fought uh, He fought everybody they put in front of him. He fought Toro Gotti, who you see beat the dog he shit beat, out of He did him Toro dirty. Oh, everybody he put in front of him, the champ, did him dirty. Oh, he, he beat dirty. the shit out of Toro Gotti. I have, my uncle told me some cold shit. He was like, it's two things you never do. You never spit in the wind because that shit going to blow right back <laughs> in your face, and you never bet against Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Champ, I mean? champ get busy. Oh, yeah, all the way. Yeah. Like, Shout yeah. out to the champ. But and, and the thing is, like, it's... What was the most? I gotta. I tell you mine first, so you get the reference of the question. You know what I mean? As a boxing fan, I that's my favorite sport. I love boxing, but ain't no more water. When, <laughs> like watching as a fan, to me, when Roy lost when I was a young mm -hmm. nigga, that shit shocked me. Yeah, it shocked me. I remember watching that shit and then, like, this was, ain't even real. I couldn't believe it was real. You was second. You was there. Second row. I was there. Yeah, I was there. Man, that shit. I was. I remember sitting like, what the fuck. Roy lost. Because there was some shit we never we seen never before. seen before. We never even seen him that get hurt. I remember yeah. when he got that disqualification and came back and knocked the nigga out oh, yeah. in the first round. But was there anybody that Griffin. you know that you were a fan of throughout the time that you you know that took a loss that you didn't think was capable of, of losing that shocked you? Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mike Tyson, man. When Mike lost to Buster Douglas, bro, we was in like shock. Who would have ever thought? You know what I mean? That shit shocked the world. Shocked the world. That shit hurt me. Mike Tyson, bro. I was <laughs> like, hurt hey, me. yeah, I was like, man, y'all niggas tripping, man. Yeah. You know what he gonna do when he get up? Sheesh, bro, you wasn't it's born yet, nigga. I seen it. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's a bad man. That was a bad man. Yeah, because yeah, nobody ever thought he was going to lose. And I yeah. think he really won that fight. If you really go back and watch it, they, he, he really dropped him. But he just that first, no, that like first knockdown, he, that, that first yeah. knockdown, that he was down knockdown, like 12 down seconds. Like something like 17 seconds. He was talking about this because they didn't count. Yeah. And then like, and if you watch the replay, you see them at the, at the way and count one. Yeah. Two and they got like 19, so it, it was a long count, but you know, that's how boxing is, man. You know, that's how it is, champ. You know, what I mean, that's how it is. Got you ever been robbed? I've been robbed before, yeah. Not yeah. robbed, like in Brownsville type robbed. I'm talking about robbed in the, what in the ring. Say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the ring, uh, I've been robbed by managers and promoters worse. Yeah, yeah I know, but we don't want we, <laughs> okay, we, we won't get into that. Okay, okay, but I'm talking about in the ring. Um. I thought I got robbed in the fight. Yeah, I thought I know. I, I felt I got robbed. Yeah, I won the fight, but um, the system was against me at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the administration at the time that was on on the helm, they was uh, they was against me, and they they took a fight from me that I thought it could have been a draw. You know what I mean? But I just jumped out the bed, took the fight. I'm gonna knock him out and do what I didn't know. He had been in training camp with Klitschko, mm -hmm. so he was used to getting punched, you know, beat up. So. First round, I came out, cracked him out. He out of here. And he, he, I gotta he, ask you he about. Wild, he stood up. Gotta ask you about, you know, the biggest scandal in recent years with the uh, with the Cotto fight. With the gloves. With, with the, the gloves. Yeah, what what did crazy. you? What was, what was your take from that? You remember I, the first fight? That shit was. That shit was under. That shit was. But that, the redemption fight is one of my top yeah, five fights yeah. of all time. That was crazy. That was it. Shout out to Miguel Cotto, good brother. Good Miguel brother. Cotto Strong and Manuel brother. Marquez. Yeah. What happened? Oh, he they uh, put they the plaster the in. Antonio they Margarito. Put, yeah. Margarito, that's yeah, it. That's yeah. what it was. It was plaster when they put it to the. Nah, it was the member. He wrapped his plaster, hands yeah, with the plaster with and the then plaster. he had that little, that little the glass gloss. of metal. Plate inside oh, nah. the hand wrap. Him up, man. man, fucked him up, man. When you see Miguel Cotto that first fight, bro, it looked like somebody was hitting him with a bat. Yeah. Damn. It was crazy. And then he ended up fighting. They ended up finding out about it and caught it before he fought Shane Mosley. Wow. They caught it right before he fought Shane Mosley and they Dude, didn't the call Shane, the fight off. No, he was great. Do that shit to Shane Mosley. And they caught oh, him. The same dude. The same dude. And then Shane Mosley came out and beat the That's dog the shit out. Trainer caught him. Yeah, his trainer caught it right before the fight. And they made him change the glove. Yeah, yeah, they made him unwrap his hands it's and the gauze. shit, the shit, yeah, it's gauze, not gauze, yeah. man. That shit is hard. You yeah. feel this yeah. shit? Yeah, they had some plasters and shit. I heard. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Wild, you, that's dangerous. Does that happen more often than in boxing that you don't hear about? I felt like it happened to me in a fight with somebody. I was like, ain't no way in the world that uh, 
that's his fist, you know. And they was kind of known for that, but I knew because he was, every punch he hit me with, I was like, God, damn, what the, how could that be, you know what I mean? But uh, I was sparring this African dude one time, and he was hitting me so hard, bro, I swear to God, I was like, yo, there's something in his gloves. I came back to my corner, I said, yo, there's something, something in his gloves. My trainer was like, nah, just go out there. I went back out there, he hit me again, boom, he was Oh, oh, he was, man, I had knots. I came to the ground, man, there's something in his gloves, man. Damn. He went and took off the man's gloves, he ain't had nothing in there, man. Damn. The man was hitting hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, he he came, I had with you while with Z, bro. I just had hey, dirty fish. I see that. I hear that. I got beaten by two hyenas. One hyena. <laughs> yo, I couldn't believe it, yo. But, um, and then we after we spawned, he went out and started hitting the bag. And he knocked the bag down. Damn. That's, that's my old. word. He that's knocked old. the bag down. I'll never forget. Because I was still in the ring thinking about that ass whooping he just gave me. And I was like, damn. I was young. I was 21 years old. So think about it like, with shit like that. Like, if the world could have got to see him, who is, yeah. who is, so the sparring be some of the greatest fights versus the one that people see. Broski, I'm What if somebody would have seen this motherfucker? Broski, I'm telling you, I had, I had some dudes that I've been in the ring with that I say was cold, and then the def, definitely the colder than the champions. Man, I spot some dudes that was hell of a hell of a dudes, man. I, Maurice Harris, everybody know Maurice Harris. Most people in boxing, one of the best sparring I ever had. I ain't hit him yet. <laughs> that was 19. I ain't hit him yet. He was cold with sparring. Some some dudes could fight in that in that gym. Some dudes are gym fighters. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but then sometimes you put them in front of the lights. Come on, bro. They say, man, I can't do it, man. I seen them. I seen dudes leave. And from the dressing room, they say what happened. They say he couldn't do it. The man. nerves. So yeah, what's the, the difference nerves. between gym fighters and the light fighters? So I don't know, man. I knew a dude, bro. That's my word. He was so cold. I don't want to blow his name up, but yo, son, he was so nice. And in the gym, nobody could see him. I'm talking about he from heavy. He was a middleweight, but the heavyweights was like, nah, 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 please, nah. He, he was coach would make us go in there with him. He was nasty. But when it was fight time. And the bell ring, his legs wouldn't work. He just would crumble and jump on the ground. We couldn't believe it because he was the he was a fly dude. He was, you know what I'm saying? He had everything in the making to be a, a world champion. And he just could not get in front of those lights, man. Some people went and got it, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like that in comedy. Yeah, I, yeah, I heard that. I heard, I heard. Mm, give and take. <laughs> we ain't getting hit by no Africans. <laughs> yeah, ain't that, that ain't like that in comedy. Ain't got your shit I up. got beaten by two hyenas. <laughs> oh man, for sure, <laughs> man. No, we appreciate you, OG. You oh, know what thank comedy you, man. is. Thank you, man. Thank you, thank you, man. man. Where's the Your book warrior, available? Man. Oh man, the book is available at champ.business. Yeah. That's it. Champ.business. No dot com, none of that. Champ.business. Learn how the champ made it, man. All the secrets to, you know, success in my life and not and overcoming and doing the best I can to be the best I can, man. Champ.business. And if you go to the website right now, you can download it for free. And if you win, if I mail it to you, I'm putting I'm putting a thousand dollars in five books. I'm gonna send them to you. Whoever gets the thousand dollars, you get the priceless information and you get a thousand dollars. Five books with a thousand dollars in it. Right. Let's go champ. Let's go champ. Let's go Let's go Look at him, y'all. 27. Let's go champ. Hollywood Casino in Florida. Let's go champ. We in there. Let's hey, go champ. I'm in hot comedy. I swear to God, I mean, I, I got y'all a lot. Send a book. I'm a, I got y'all. That's straight. Send a person you won all five books. Ooh. Nah, that African gonna win all five books. He didn't say this to me. my money. This is your first time coming to the 85 South Show. Yes, but if you ever want to stop through here and tell us a thousand boxing stories, oh, man. Man. you know you more than welcome. I want to show, man. I want to oh, do yeah, that sports show. Yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, bro, I got to do that, man. I got to do that show, man. I can't wait. Say no more. That's Most all I did. We ain't going to this. We're not ending this show until you throw me the Sharpie. We, we got all the legends who stopped through here. They signed the table. Oh, word. And until we get our signed pair of gloves for the studio, okay, okay. we going to just, we'll accept it on the table. Look at them, y'all. 85 South Show. Shannon and Cannon, we out of here. Let's go, champ. 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 Shout out to my son. Chad, I love you. <laughs> let's get a pitch. Let's do it. Smooth, don't know. Oh, Come on, man. What you doing? Yeah. 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 Oh, man. I love you, boy. Thank yeah, you, champ. Yeah. Okay, what's this? I got my own lease. Yeah? Yes, sir. 
Popcorn. Come on, man. 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 Come